Do you want to do this to every enemy in Destiny? Yeah, I thought you might. Which is why today, I have a build for you that not only allows you to hit for max visual damage numbers on any enemy in the entire game, but that also allows you to do it as frequently as possible with supers every 30 seconds, constant unkillable levels of restoration healing, ignitions on ignitions on ignitions, and of course, a fashion setup that will have your friends, flannies, and all of LFG addressing you as the one and only Celestial Nighthawk. And I want to thank you for watching this video by giving away three Draconis Tetrachroma emblems. And I'll tell you how to enter right after I tell you about this video's sponsor. A game that you can cozy up on the couch with during this winter season, is playable on both mobile and PC, and has over 800 incredible champions. It's perfect if you're into collecting awesome characters and having a great time with beautiful gameplay. So if that sounds fun, then join me in the adventure that is Raid Shadow Legends. Raid has just introduced the Cursed City, an expansive piece of PvE content with 100 stages to complete across four increasingly difficult districts. It offers loads of player choice through player-selected paths, great rewards like artifacts that can be used to summon epic and mythical champions, and tons of replayability through monthly resets that bring new battle conditions and new rewards. And after December 15th, you can participate in the Christmas Story event, a special holiday-themed event where you can follow Sir Nicholas through a festive story and play minigames for a chance to win both in-game and real-life prizes, like epic and legendary champions, and even Amazon gift cards at RaidXmas.com. So be sure to click on my link in the description or scan my QR code on screen to get two epic champions, Lightsworn and Juliana, who is available from level 15, not one, but two at once, only available with my link. Once you're in, come and find me under the name Macdix and join my clan, Celestial Nighthawk, and will be legends together. And to enter to win the Draconis Tetrachroma emblem, simply like the video, be subscribed to the channel, and comment below what exotic you want to see in the next build video. With all that said, let's construct our Celestial Nighthawk Super Soldier. Things of course kick off with the Celestial Nighthawk Exotic Hunter Helmet, which has received some new perks that you might not know about. Reviewing the basics, this helmet modifies your Golden Gun into a one-shot missile that deals 625% increased damage and refunds 33% of your super energy on Golden Gun Kill. Additionally, it now also grants an additional one and a half to four and a half percent bonus super energy on precision kills depending on enemy rank, meaning that your non-super neutral game weapon choice and gameplay can now be extremely impactful to leading you towards significantly more Celestial Nighthawk Golden Gun activations. Speaking of which, the specific Golden Gun option you'll want to be sure to go with here is the Marksman variant as opposed to the alternative of Deadshot due to the fact that Golden Gun Marksman is able to deal precision damage when hitting an enemy's crit spot, something that Deadshot Golden Gun cannot do. As far as your base ability kit goes, you'll look to take Gambler's Dodge for melee ability refund when used near enemies, Knife Trick for strong ad clear and high scorch stacking capabilities, and the healing grenade for endgame survivability, and to kick off what will eventually be our 100% uptime restoration healing buff. But before we talk about that, let's first take a look at our solar aspects, beginning with On Your Mark, which in addition to granting three fragment slots, also greatly increases your handling and reload speed for each stack of On Your Mark that you possess, acquirable through precision enemy final blows or by activating your class ability. This aspect makes your neutral gameplay feel buttery smooth and truly fulfills that gunslinger power fantasy that this build aims to achieve. Another thing that adds a significant amount of power to your neutral gameplay is the second aspect we'll be utilizing for this build, Gunpowder Gamble, which most know is an ignition on a stick that replaces your grenade at six charges 
that you can throw and shoot midair to wipe any pack of ads off the face of the planet. What most don't know, however, is that different methods of killing enemies grant different amounts of stacks. With Solar Weapon Final Blows granting one stack, Ignition and Scorch Final Blows granting three, Ability Final Blows granting four, and Super Final Blows granting six. And the Satchel Charge does some pretty nice damage for either nuking a room full of ads or for supplementing your boss DPS. And do me a favor and consider liking the video and subscribing to the channel if you learn something new about Gunpowder Gamble in this section. Now with these two aspects, we are granted five total fragment slots to fill, the first of which will be occupied by the Ember of Torches to acquire the Radiant buff when striking an enemy with a powered melee hit. On top of that, we'll also want the Ember of Solace for a significant boost to initial solar buff durations, specifically the Radiant buff from our Ember of Torches and the Restoration buff from our Healing Grenade. This fragment will give us a lot more time and wiggle room to extend these buffs through fragment number three, the Ember of Empyrean, which extends all solar buffs like Radiant and Restoration by four seconds for every solar final blow. And to be able to reactivate your Radiant buff through a throwing knife hit with the Ember of Torches as much as possible, you'll want to slot the Ember of Singeing in slot four for significantly increased class ability regeneration when scorching targets to fuel a maximum uptime gambler's dodge to fully refresh your melee ability on command. In slot number five, you'll look to increase Scorch stacks for higher damage and more frequent ignitions with the Ember of Ashes for a 50% increase to all Scorch stack applications, most notably taking our Scorch stacks from our Knife Trick Fan Blade from 60 to 90 total Scorch stacks and Scorch stacks from weapon perks like Incandescent up from 30 to 45 total Scorch stacks. And that Incandescent Scorch stack in increase is very important because through all of the weapons I tested with this build, the Apocal Integration Hand Cannon with Stats for All and Incandescent is the perfect combination of high performance and easy to acquire. If you don't yet have this weapon, it's easily obtainable through a quest from Nimbus consisting of six very simple and quick steps. And if you already acquired it but dismantled it at some point, that's not a problem either, being that it is a static role that can simply be pulled from your collections tab. I tried out a ton of different weapons with this build, such as top traditional meta picks like SMGs, all the way to less commonly used PvE weapons like pulse rifles. But Ultimately, hand cannons felt perfect for a build that is all about getting precision final blows on enemies. Simply put, they offer the highest damage per bullet, plenty of time in between shots to readjust accuracy, very reasonable range, and with their recent PvE buffs, plenty of consistent and bursty damage. And the Apocal integration ships with the perfect static perks to check all of the boxes for this build, with things like its solar element to make use of the Ember of Empyrean for infinite radiant and restoration buffs, the stats for all perk for even faster handling and reload speed bonuses, and of course, Incandescent to proc the Ember of Singeing and lead to eventual ignitions. And if that wasn't enough to convince you, it's also one of the coolest looking legendary weapons in the history of the game. As far as armor mods go, we're looking to further juice up our super energy gains, hand cannon damage uptime, and overall damage. Starting with the helmet, where we'll slot a copy of Heavy Finder for increased heavy ammo drops, and Harmonic Siphon for orb of power generation on solar weapon multi kills. Down on the gloves, we'll look to take a copy of Harmonic Loader for increased solar weapon reload speed, as well as a copy of Impact Induction for a chunk of grenade energy when dealing powered melee damage. On the chest, you'll look to slot resistance mods matching the damage of enemies in your current activity for higher durability and survivability to allow your restoration buff plenty of time to always keep you healthy. Moving to the boots, you'll opt into one copy of Solar Surge for a 10% solar weapon damage boost when armor charged, 
as well as one copy of Kinetic Surge for the same benefit to Kinetic Weapons. Reason being is that the Golden Gun Super is actually not coded as Solar Damage in Destiny 2, but rather as Kinetic Damage. As such, a Kinetic Weapon Surge will bump up your Golden Gun to hit even harder than ever before. Finally, on the class item, you'll look to take Reaper for Orb of Power Generation on Weapon Final Blows after class ability activation, powerful attraction to scoop up all nearby orbs from that very same class ability activation, and time dilation to increase the duration of each armor charge stack for longer weapon surge buffs. And you might notice that there is a bit of room and energy for additional mods in this setup, specifically on the helmet and gloves. The task of filling I leave up to you, depending on your playstyle and what you feel would benefit you most. With all of that slotted in, along with stat prioritizations of resilience and intellect, and 100% optional artifact mods like Kindling Trigger, Flint Striker, Heart of the Flame, Wished Into Being, Revitalizing Blast, and Rays of Precision, you'll be able to absolutely ace any activity in all of Destiny. And to get started right now, you can scroll down to the description for the Destiny Item Manager link that will automatically copy all of this over to your Guardian in just one click. And if you want to thank me, hitting those like and subscribe buttons does just that. If you really want to thank me though, consider stopping by the live stream at twitch.tv slash so I can say hi to you and thank you back for watching my videos. Be sure to check out Raid Shadow Legends through the QR code on screen or the link in the description. Thank you so much for watching and as always, have a great day.